This is going to be a poinsettia tutorial. I'm just learning this, so it may be a little bit rough. Um, I'm going to use a number 12 Royal Majestic Flat, or they also call this a Bright. I have my pattern drawn out. Um, I will need this because it's a new pattern for me or way to do the brush strokes, so I will have to follow a pattern to get it right. I have my paint for the Poinsettia, I will use Cranberry Wine. This is Americana Deco Art. Cranberry Wine and a white. I don't have the white bottle here, but white is white. I think it's called Titanium White. For the leaves, I will use Evergreen and Cadmium Yellow. And now I will show you a few of just the strokes rather than drilling an actual blossom, and then we'll get on to doing the blossom. First, I'll demonstrate how I load my brush, and I put each corner in a puddle of the paint, one white, one cranberry wine, and I blend it in. And you'll notice that between the two, it starts to blend the cranberry wine, blends over into the white. Now, you get your brush really full of paint, probably two-thirds of the way up, and just work it in as best you can. I also have a, a darker pigment there for adding a little more color. You don't have to do that. Just some of the petals, I want them to stand out right along the edge. Also, I could you know, do that with a hint of black to give it a little more. And that is how I load the brush. So now I'm going to do some practice strokes. So, as I said, this is going to be a little rough. And you notice I'm just pressing down and following the outline of my pattern and then go up to a point and then you drag in your line. hope I'm not getting in the way. If I am, I guess I should put my palette over to the other side. Okay. And you just stroke them on there. Thankfully, you don't have to be precise. See how I'm putting the brush down and flattening it. Let it come up to the point, come up to the point, squish it down, and let it come up to the point. And you'll see how sometimes I falter because going a different direction, it um, messes with my brain. So I just seem to do it better coming towards me than I do going upwards. And don't forget to drag in your middle. Whoops, that one was a little too thick. Sometimes your paint can start to dry in your brush and it'll make it hard for the chisel edge to stay sharp. So that's my practice. Um, so we'll get on with doing the actual one on my board plank that I was decorating. This is basically going to show you how I transfer the pattern. I um, have a pattern for this. As I said, I'm not great at doing this yet, so I do need a pattern to follow. This is a white graphite paper that I use to transfer. I put it underneath my pattern. I use the white because the board is dark and it's a little bit easier, and I just go over my pattern like this until I have it all copied. I don't know if you can see the pattern or not, but it's there. It's faint. This is going to be a leaf, so I double loaded my brush with the green and the yellow. The stroke is the same. Since I don't do well going that way, I'm going to stroke it downwards instead for this leaf. Um, many times you can flip the board over and then I would be going the other direction. I can do this with this leaf. I'm fine. I'll do the chisel edge up the center. My other leaf is over here. I will do the same. And many times with a leaf, I will have the dark, like the dark green and the yellow, 
and then flip the brush and then the dark green blue gets the yellow to create uh, a seam but with this I'm going to do it this way where I have the yellow meeting in the center so there are my leaves now I'll go get my other color on my palette and I'll come in and do the red petals or whatever they're called on poinsettias all right let's do another one I reload my brush each time I do one of the strokes go out you see how I lift the brush up press out press out come to a point and I'll do the same press lift press lift press lift I didn't get it in the center there but no big deal when I do that and it looks like I had uh, dipped my brush in the white but that's what happens now I can let it dry go over it or I can wipe it let me show you how I wipe them just in case you make a mistake and you just want to wipe it off so here we go especially as there's no really painted undercoat this is just a stained finish and, and there it did wipe off my pattern and it does have to dry before I go back over it so I will go do one up there and let me get my brush reloaded here and make sure my white and burgundy or cranberry wine whatever it's called are separated on the brush and then we will go this way you see how I don't do so hot going upwards so I will come down go out go out go out and come to a point now I'll do this side again since it was so lousy and drag in the stem much better so then I have two more that one is not dry so let's see how I do without a pattern that's going to be a trick okay now I'm going to be going downwards so go out out go out out there not too bad for not having a pattern I think I'm getting way too much white on my brush so let me load up with more burgundy cranberry wine and go out go out go out just reload this time I'm just going to reload with the burgundy so I don't get too much white and I'm going to go out Oop, I'm going the wrong direction see how I lose my lose my thought let me go this way and bring in a stamen it's a little cockeyed but you can always add another thing in there also I've seen doubles and we'll put the dots in there maybe I'll just go over that one go over this one and make it a little bit wider And you can tweak it until you're happy but there's that part now I'll load up a brush with to do the dots for the center okay what I do for the dots is I this is a another brush the other brush had a pointy end. this one has a round end end and I'll just dip it in a little bit of green paint and come in and make the little dots for the center and what I'm going to use just a tiny bit of paint sometimes I don't even put out a puddle of paint I'll just use the lid and here I'll dip it in there I cleaned it off the green off and then I'll go in back in with some yellow re-dip it and there you have your poinsettia oh I didn't do the um, pine needles for you so let me do the pine needles real quick let me rinse that brush out and dry it and then I can load it with the green and the yellow for the pine needles I really should put out a puddle of yellow but I'm just going to dip the corner in I want mostly green anyways so lightly lightly on your chisel edge you'll just drag out pine needles I have a tendency to put too much pressure so they're not real thin but it does help to have um, very newish brush 
brushes do get old and then they won't hold the chisel edge very well. But usually you can use them for a long time before that happens. Very light, very light. And put in your pine needles. And you can put in as many or as few as you want. If you want any curlicues, go back in with a liner brush, loosen it, get some green. Curlicues are also a challenge for me. I have a tendency to be heavy handed. So I try to get my brush very pointed and I just lightly pull out some curlicues. Now we'll see if I can do a double poinsettia. I'm having a rough time doing a single, so a double might be way beyond my talents, but let's give it a try anyways. Now here I'm attempting to do the double. You can see a couple of little practice ones I've done. Um, I, that one I had added a lighter red, and I didn't like how it turned out, so now I'm adding a deeper burgundy in the middle, and I don't have a pattern, so... A lot of them have these little buds over top of the larger ones, and that's what I was trying to emulate, and I'm not figuring out a good color to go over top. I guess I will do the white maybe on the outside, and then that would, and the darker burgundy. See how we. I changed to a number eight flat brush so I can make these. And I'm not real thrilled with how I'm doing them, but it is. Sometimes you have to wait till you get done and then look at it, and then you'd be surprised at what you think. That one should have been more this way. And I can come in and I can darken around them like shadow so that they stand out against it. Let's see if that upper red one is... Brighter red one is ready to go over, yeah. Let's see. And then I'll come in and put this demon. So you have these smaller buds going over top of the larger ones. Maybe once I put the middle in, we get green to put middle. So I probably should wait and practice on these double ones a few more times before calling it good, or figure out what would be a good color to stand out against the background color. Maybe have the background ones be, rather than white and burgundy, have them be a darker burgundy and a lighter burgundy, and then come on top with the smaller petals with the white. And I think it's a cute color burgundy. It's cranberry wine. And call it good. I think that would work better because the white would show against the dark and bring them forward. Okay, that's it for the points that is.